let's go put this headliner in the truck and we'll do a good little walk around video on it and it'll officially be done and gone through and I'm gonna post it for sale. I'll get you guys a little fire up video right here. 6,000 degrees in the air conditioner. So far so good, it's still been rocking and rolling. Oh, this thing is an awesome starting truck, I'll tell you that much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the final step on the green truck is redo the um, messed up headliner that I already redid, but I, I was uh, not smart when I did it. I thought I could just glue to this stuff, but this stuff is deteriorating something fierce. So this was the first truck that I restored, and I just laid a, one coat on this, laid the headliner on it. That was wrong. What you need to do, I pressure washed all this off on grandma's truck, all this crappy stuff, because this is like... You gotta be careful with it, but pressure washing it doesn't hurt. Just take enough off or have enough pressure to take this stuff off of it. Let it dry. Spray this with the adhesive, and then you spray the backside of this with the adhesive. The two of those things bond together and they make something fierce. It's like an ice scraper. You don't want to point it directly at the mat though, it'll it'll hurt that thing. Well, this is a most time efficient method I found. Once you're done pressure washing it, you put it out in the sun on a 100 plus degree day and it doesn't take too long to dry it all the way out. You gotta make sure it's good and dry, water gets in between the layers. So I put it up on a vehicle, let it tilt, drain out, dry out. Now we got a good clean canvas to work with. I bought this stuff at Napa, automotive headliner adhesive. It's easy, Skipper. Oh, I'm gonna shoot the truck. Me, yep. just me and the boys hanging out in the shop right now. Boone's uh, cataloging some cardboard for me. We got a supervisor. Check her out, looking totally freaking badass. That looks so much better. I don't know if these trucks ever came with a black headliner, but I'm digging it, and it's a lot easier to put on because uh, if you got a little bit of dirt on your fingers, it doesn't look so bad. We just got a little bit of dust, work it in, use one of these. Makes it a lot easier because it'll roll in nice and smooth. Around the corners, I had to add a little bit of adhesive towards the sides, but the truck is, gosh dang, 1994. So it's a 27 year old truck. So this piece under here is 27 years old and I just pressure washed it. It handled that. So there's a couple spots, like right here, it started to separate. So I put a little spray adhesive inside that. It's holding her together. But most of these areas, except for the front, and back, they all get covered up. Like this will get tucked in on the weather stripping. This one has a piece of plastic. You got your dome light uh, temperature display thing up there. Dome light back there, handles. And I just X-patterned these. I cut this with my pocket knife. It's super easy. Uh, but it's very delicate situation. You need two people when you're throwing this on there. Single cabs, you can still squeeze them in with the whole rest of the interior in the truck. Extended cabs, uh, it's a lot bit more difficult. I'd put mine in without the dash on grandma's truck and hopefully I don't have to pull that one back out. For the old foam treatment get that new paint really shining that thing is sick all righty guys oh four is looking dang good let's run down here and make video talking about the green truck i tried to film a second ago but the camera overheated because it's so hot outside but you guys have been blowing up my phone well everything goes to my phone but you've been blowing up my emails and dms and everything once i posted a little teaser of saying i'm gonna sell this green truck so hopefully you guys share that enthusiasm after I tell you the price that I'm going to ask for this old girl. But I think it's worth it because I put a lot of effort and time into this truck to bring it back to life. And I honestly, I don't think I could be any more happy with how this thing turned out given the condition it was in when I first got it. But I got her all opened up so we can talk about her and I'll show you the ins and outs and tell you the, you know, the pros and cons of the truck because 
everything works on this thing, which I'm pretty proud to say, except for the dang fuel gauge. I didn't know it didn't work because I didn't drive the truck hardly at all other than I drove it off the trailer and drove it into the shop. Put the fresh bed on this thing, find out it doesn't work. But if you guys are unfamiliar with the truck, I've pretty much gone through it from top to bottom. And um, it is a 1994, I got something in my, look at this, freaking foxtails. Ah, uh, come on. There we go. It is a 1994 Dodge 2500 with a 12 valve Cummins. And the one thing that makes these things harder to find, the 12 valves, they're pretty relative, like they're all over the place. But to find one that's a factory five speed, that's a little bit more difficult and a challenge. And then it's got four wheel drive. So those are a couple little key ingredients into why these things are becoming more valuable. And in the state of California, big reason why I wanted to save this truck is this is a smog exempt diesel truck. And that is awesome. Cause you know, <sighs> that's one big, big issue with California is they're trying to tell everybody that diesel sucks, even though diesel powers the planet. But show you guys everything I've done to it. The cab has been repainted. This is a new fender. This is a new uh, hood. The grill has a new hood up here, or new grill right here. And then um, the ends, engine wise, it's still bone stock engine, except for I turned the pump up a little bit. It's got a number eight plate. Um, smoke screw has been turned because we like to remind people that are tailgating us to back up. And she smokes pretty nice four inch uh diamond eye exhaust with a muffler killer dowel pin's been tapped front and rear main brand new seals and the tappet cover the big main areas of concern on uh, 12 valve engines are and have been fixed so that it should be good for plenty of miles ahead the five speed trans has a um, fifth gear nut has a prevention nut on it New clutch, new slave, or not, it's got the same slave cylinder on it, but it's got a new pilot bearing and throw out bearing. Transfer case, I just rebuilt that. It's got a brand new front drive shaft. The front differential has been replaced. New steering components, power steering box. That is a new one. Power steering pump has been fixed or replaced. It's got a new one. I resealed the vacuum pump, I believe, while I was in there. I don't know why I wouldn't because you're right there. You might as well swap a new seal on it so you don't have to worry about that later. Basically, I wanted to make sure this thing, all the kinks were ironed out. Heat, AC, everything works inside the cab here, which is pretty dang nice. Having air conditioned begins the fact that my camera is trying to overheat. Factory cup holders. Not that you're going to use these because they're in a terrible location, but they are still in um, perfect condition. They still work. Normally, those things break. Um, the dash. I put this cover on it so it matches my fresh headliner that I just put on there, which turned out beautiful. The dash is not cracked, but I like putting a cover over these things anyway, just grandpa status. That's all, really. The new stereo, it is Bluetooth. Oh. Some, check this out though, this is what makes it cool. Ready, ready? Put her in reverse. Got yourself a nice backup camera right there. Aftermarket fog lights that I installed. Shut the key off. You won't run your battery dead if you accidentally leave one of those things on. Parking brake works as it should. Holds the truck back like a boss. It does have good brakes on it. I did not need to replace them. It looked like the guy I bought it from on the rear. They were brand new. On the fronts, I actually did replace those ones. But uh, the seat is not completely destroyed. It was not a factory power mirror truck when I got it, but it actually had the um, wiring and stuff in there for it. So I just, I added these. Um, so that's kind of a nice touch if you're going to be towing or whatever. Power mirrors locks all that stuff works like i'm telling you guys i've been through this truck the only thing that i have found wrong with it and i've you know i've been driving it off and on the last couple weeks you know iron out the kinks and stuff like that uh was the uh the fuel thing it just you gotta just go by the trip meter and the only cosmetic issue that's really a big issue i didn't pull big or little dents out of like the cab and hood and stuff like that because original plan with this truck i thought i was gonna use it for like a little work truck kind of a rig because it wasn't in very good shape in the beginning and i thought you know what I'm, I'm gonna live with a couple of these dings there in the cab replace the hood that fender because those were bad replace the bed but the only ding on the bed is on this side something went down it and i, I beat them out a little bit and put a basketball back there and popped a big dent but it's, it's showing some showing some skin right here that's the only real bummer 
but uh, I thought about fixing it but then I thought maybe if I keep it you know it's just gonna probably get beat up because I wanted to use this truck to go camping I put the camper shell on it uh, it's not a perfect match of green because this is actually for a Chevy and so I put the camper on it put carpet in the back so the dogs could ride back here and we could go camping four-wheel drive put the big old meats on it they're 35 inch BF Goodrich uh, cam twos those are those are not very cheap tires I'll tell you that much they're pretty nice they're very durable tough and they will not fit a second gen worth of crap unless you put a leveling kit so that's what I did here uh, put the leveling block on it they still rub just a touch I put these mud flaps on it because it was throwing crap everywhere but I put a quarter inch block behind the wheel and it kicked it out just that little bit and they don't rub when you're on flat ground you start jeeping and stuff there yeah they're gonna rub but that was nice when I discovered that little little um, key to success right there with getting your 35s to fit and not having to lift your truck up two miles but it does have slight bit of a wheelie action with that leveling kit so I put some bags under the back and you just pump them up like 10 15 pounds and it'll level the truck out like perfectly and look badass I mean she looks pretty good right here I'm tr I gotta be in the shade right now guys it is too freaking hot I, uh, if I keep this truck I have no problem keeping this truck it'll just sit around I use it whenever I get a chance or whenever I just want to because I got plenty of trucks nowadays um, just simple stuff like tailgate working perfect I have the keys for the camper shell those things lock I think this one actually has a locking gas cap on it too I mean just you got to click it I don't click it because then you actually have to uh, get the key out for it but all in all like the typical things that fall apart on these trucks after however many miles of just abuse like I got fixed all those things and they should be either I fixed them to spec or I fixed them even better and you know I just it's a bittersweet wanting to sell this truck because uh Taylor's not going to drive anymore since we had Callahan and I don't blame her you know it's not really easy to get a kid around in a single cab truck especially when he's in a car seat and stuff like that and you got dogs so what else can I say about this old girl what am I missing I mean she cleaned up damn good she turned out to be such an awesome truck but let's go ahead and talk price guys so with today's market and everything for these especially in the state of california if you buy it out of state i sold my last truck to hawaii if that sells you anything uh, i'm gonna tell you guys here and then if uh all the guys have been blowing up the email and stuff haven't come through uh then i'm gonna post it on local craigslist and facebook and stuff like that because i want to see this truck go to a nice home and so it can be used so i'm gonna ask fourteen thousand bucks for this truck being said uh I think it's very much worth that in the market with everything today. That's where we're going to end this video though, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Cold green truck. That's a pretty intense walk around on this thing.